Hi everyone, this is Flora Bologna and Yoka Buda, and we are here to talk about our participation at the PAN 2020 task to identify fake news spreaders on Twitter. First, I will talk a little bit about our motivation and mindset, and then I will give a short overview of our approach to solve the problem, and finally, we will go into more details uh, of the main steps that we did when we solve the problem. So just to say a few words about our motivation and mindset, uh, we participated together in a PAN 2019 task where we also faced a binary text classification task. Uh, we had to determine about uh, Twitter users, whether they are bots or human, and in case if they are human, whether they are male or female users. Additionally, we both wrote our master thesis uh, last year about binary author profiling um, problems. And finally, just what I want to mention about our mindset, that we really just focused on developing a model as accurate as possible. So this was our main goal with uh, our participation. So the first challenge that we faced when we started to train our model was that uh, this year's training data was significantly smaller compared to the data set last year or compared to the data sets for the gender profiling tests from previous years. Uh, this made us decide to use uh, simpler machine learning models as opposed to, for example, neural networks. Um, as of the features that we first used, uh, we knew from the literature that both character and word anchoring based features are pretty decent predictors uh, in binary text classification tasks. So what we first did for the early bird testing phase is that we did a very extensive grid search and cross validation for word anchoring based models, which were regularized logistic regressions, random forest models, support vector machine classifiers and XGBoost classifiers. And once we did the grid search and cross validation, we chose those hyperparameters and the model that uh, performed the best and trained uh, that model on the entire training data set and uploaded that as our um, early bird testing software. And what we experienced was a approximately five percentage point drop in the accuracies for both languages, which we were obviously not very happy about. Um, so we decided that we needed something else, but we didn't really know what direction we could uh, go into. One of our ideas was that uh, word engram as features might not be as good predictors in this domain. So we decided to see how a model that uses um, descriptive statistics of the text as features uh, can perform in this task. And uh, we did a grid search and cross validation to find an XGBoost model uh, that uses these types of features but we didn't really see any significant improvement uh, in the accuracy and it was also true that from the word engram based models we there was very tiny difference between the performance of uh, the best models so we had these five models that were more or less able to uh, predict with similar accuracies and we decided that we wanted to combine them somehow. Uh, to find the best way of combination we created synthetic data sets from the probabilities that these five models predicted and then we wanted to find the best stacking method and for this we again did a grid search and cross validation to find the best uh, performing stacking model out of re uh, reach regressions, logistic regressions, and majority voting. 
And finally, once we found the best performing stacking model, which was a logistic regression, we used that in our final software and for the testing phase. Some details about our word engram based models. Uh, for the extensive grid search that we did, we experimented with different text cleaning uh, approaches and different vectorizations, meaning that we tested a couple of um, engram ranges uh, in the vectorization. And besides text cleaning and vectorization, we also experimented with a large number of hyperparameters for each type of models that we uh, tested. Uh, you can see all the hyperparameters we uh, experimented with on this slide and with all the all the options that we tried we tested a total of nearly 1500 models for each language. Once we found the model that achieved the highest accuracy during the uh, cross-validation phase, we used those hyperparameters and that model to retrain uh, on the entire training dataset. And that was the brain of our software that we uploaded for early bird testing. Um, however, we saw that this model, which proved to be the best with um, the training data, produced accuracies approximately five percentage points lower for both languages on the test data. So we faced this problem that we wanted to create a more uh, stable software, a, more, a, a, mod a model that's able to perform better. Therefore, we decided to train a stacking model to build a more reliable model. For this, we used the best models trained on the World Engram feature set with each algorithm, a logistic regression, a random forest, a support vector machine, and an XGBoost model. Furthermore, we built an XGBoost model based on statistical variables extracted from the tweets. Our, go our goal with this was to capture information which cannot be represented with engram-based models. For example, the engram models handle the 100 tweets of each person as one continuous text. By contrast, with the statistical model, we tried to capture some aspects of the variance of the unique tweets of the users. Therefore, this model is based on descriptive statistics, the mean, the minimum and the maximum value, the standard deviation and the range of the length of the tweets of each user. Additionally, we also tried to capture the medium specific behavior of the users and also included the type token ratio as a stylistic feature. All those style is probably better captured by the engram based models. To find the best hyperparameters for this model, we used the five fold cross validation and after after setting the hyperparameters, we retrain the model on the whole training set. After the separate models were trained, we had to train the stacking model. The challenge we faced here was to find a method to train this model without overfitting to the training data, which probably would have happened if we had trained the stacking model and the separate models on the same data. To avoid this, we constructed two simulated datasets with the same method, one to fit the stacking model on and one to evaluate the reliability of the train model. To construct these datasets, we used the five-fold splitting of the training data and refitted the separate models with the earlier find best hyperparameter sets five times and gave prediction with these models to the corresponding held out data. These predictions make up the constructed datasets. This way, both, both of these datasets contains predictions by each algorithm for each user in the training data. 
but these predictions are produced with five different models trained on different chunks of the training data but using the same hyperparameters. To construct the two datasets, we use different splittings of the training data. We interpreted these constructed datasets as an approximate sample from the distribution of the predictions of the final five models on a random test set. After these constructed datasets were ready, we tried three algorithms to stack the separate models, majority voting, ridge regression, and logistic regression. To find the best hyperparameter sets, we again used the five-fold cross-validation, and then we refitted the models to the whole constructed training dataset. To select the best model, since its re reliability was important, we not only compared the cross-validated accuracy results of the model, but also looked for the smallest drop on the constructed development set. This way, we selected the logistic regression model for both languages. Although the accuracy results on the training set of our final models were not better than those of our early bar models, and in the case of the Spanish data, they were even lower by 2 percentage points. Since we managed to avoid overfitting and therefore our final test results did not drop significantly compared to the results on the training sets, our final test results are significantly better compared to our early bird test results. And finally, I just want to show you the logistic regression coefficients of the predicted probabilities of each model. Since these variables are highly correlated, correlated this should be interpreted with caution. But it is interesting to see that the random forest model got a zero coefficients in both language. And although the statistical variables based model is probably the least correlated with the other models, it has a relatively low coefficient in both language, which could indicate that these variables are less informative in the in identification of the fake news spreaders compared to the word engrams. Thank you for your attention.